Johnny Baba, and you're listening to The Peel. Hey, thanks for tuning into this week's episode of The Peel. Unfortunately, we had some issues with audio, which made us cut the beginning of the show. This serves as your introduction to the episode, and we'll pick up with the guys talking about why Kyoto and Elise haven't started since the Golden Cup. Thank you for tuning in via YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play Music, or via our website at thepeellive.com, and very, very soon on KTXF TV, The Real. As always, enjoy the show, and remember, stay forever old. During the Gold Cup, right, it was every day except for match day. And that's absurd. There's no recovery time for your body to recover. I mean, if you think about any sport, there's always a day off that players get. NFL is a perfect example. If they win or even if they lose, coach always gives them that next day off. And if they win, they get two days off. Um, and, you know, the, the Honduran national team, for whatever reason, whether it's they want to just try to push fitness as hard as possible, they just run their players into the ground. And Elise and Kyoto are suffering because of that. And I, I, I learned this through all the questions I started asking. And one thing that came to mind is Boney, uh, Boniak, you know, when he first came to us and he was playing with us for the first, sec, first and second year, actually really the first year he came to us, he was phenomenal. He was one of the best players on the pitch. And then he went off and he played, it was either Gold Cup or World Cup with, well, it wasn't World Cup with Hunter, so it must have been Gold Cup. And he came back from Gold Cup, and he was just a shell of his former self, and he's never fully recovered from that to become that player that he's capable of being. Um, and I say all of this to say that is one of the biggest reasons that Kyoto and Elise have not started yet is because they're still, Wilmer wants to bring them back slowly to let them get that recovery time that they didn't get for those two and a half to three weeks with the Gold Cup with the Honduran national team. Um, and there's a whole, you know, discussion to be had outside of that related to, you know, should more Hondurans be pushing to not go to their national team every once in a while, uh, you know, to focus more on club over country. And that becomes a huge debate even within the U.S. too related to club over country. But for now, we're talking RSL versus Houston. So there you go. But that was the explanation for that. Hopefully people can see. Uh, I need to get a little. Thing. Let's pull up the starting lineup. I'm going to do that right let's, now as soon as I find it. Stopping. August. Fifth. Line up. All right, it, it, it's coming here. Well, we didn't actually go over to score yet, right? No, Not we yet. haven't yet. Oh, we probably should do that. Somebody so, should probably call that out. In case you guys didn't know, it did end up in a nothing, nothing draw. Um, as I said before, there wasn't a whole lot of highlights. Uh, AJD did get a uh, team of the week. Honors well, there was there was a major low light. Yeah, yeah, there was um, a major, major low light. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I guess we, we could wait to pull Alex into all this here in, in a little bit. Oh, yeah. I was just, but, just saying. And, you know, it was all around. Not even just the Dynamo played bad. RSL didn't. Out of out of the matches that they've played as of recently, this was probably their worst. When you By have far. Zero, when you have By zero far. shots on goal, like RSL, RSL could have won that game easily if they put but a let, shot on goal. Let's give credit to their midfield because they created the chances. But it they're was finishing. just their finishing that finishing was off. just finishing as poor off, as Finishing possible. was awful on, on both sides. I could also say Plata could have netted yeah. himself at least two. Yeah, he could have. I mean, but he set up two or three, too, yeah. that just didn't go in for whatever. I mean, there were at least three chances I can remember at the end of the match in the last ten minutes of that match that RSL had wide open opportunities after driving into the box, and they just flat out missed the goal, uh, the mouth of the goal entirely. Um, so, yeah, I definitely agree with that, but... But um, I do want to say one thing, and I, I need to, again, give this guy credit. I think he's probably, at this point, he might be my MVP on this season, is Juan David Cabezas. Because without him on the pitch, RSL are scoring more goals. That's true. Cabezas has come up very huge, you know, and he's turned heads on it. So, And he is on loan, so we will have to buy him at the end of the season. But Him yeah. and Elise, yeah. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, Cabezas com- coming in coming into the season with Cabezas knowing his track record of yellow cards and red cards, it was a little skeptical. But man, he's he's played lights out. He has yet to serve a uh, I think he's accumulation only, suspension, yeah. which is ridiculous at this point in that's the year awesome. for a D mid awesome. that is yes. a physical D mid. That's awesome. Yeah, with the play, with the tackles that he makes, yes. That is I feel incredible. like one of his best qualities is, and this is something Garrido never learned, is that he's learned when to foul. And he's learned when to foul physically to slow the match down, to stop the match, to give, you know, to reset the defense, whatever it may be. So we ran a 4 3 3 
Let's try and gotten to so the starting line. So pretty much the all that we run yes. is the four three three. Pretty yeah. much the four three three, uh, which is obviously the common uh, memo. Minotas and Winger up top. Uh, Alex base Austin Clark in the midfield. Uh, Dylan Rimmick uh, getting the start over DMB. I, I heard nothing on DMB. Uh, Leonardo Machado and De La Garza obviously in the back line there. And then of course Derek in that so. Who had to do nothing. Who literally Derek, had who literally, to make zero yeah, saves. Who literally had to do nothing. That, but you know I, what? That was his third I, clean sheet on the season. Congratulations, I, Derek. Yeah. We love you. Can man. I also yeah. give him kind of a Oh, well, dude, that one play. on that ball that definitely went out of bounds. Well, okay, so here's the thing, right? <laughs> and this is perfect because this will we'll, we'll talk about this more in a minute. But if that ha- if that had turned into a goal, it would not have counted. I mean, it would have counted in the run of play, but VAR would have <laughs> immediately overturned it. They would have told the ref to go rewatch it because that ball definitely crossed over the line completely, and because it would have been a mistake on the referee's part, they would have been able to review that, and <coughs> thus it would have been overturned. It would have been a no goal. RSL, you know, the Rio Tinto would have just erupted in complete and utter booze. And I'm glad that they didn't have to go that route because I really wanted the, you know, I'm glad that the main focus on VAR for the weekend was FC Dallas yes. messing up. Uh, Jeff wants to know how the uh, Alex and Beckerman deal went with me and Megan. How did that go? Not too much. Uh, no, uh. She, she, she passed out. We had, we had a rough week. Oh, uh, that doesn't surprise me. And, uh, I think I made it to, like, the 75th minute before I passed out, but I got up and watched it in the morning. But um, I did want to get into that, though. Why was Alex so physical so early in that match? Six minutes, and he was already getting talked to by the ref. You know, I think part of it is that Alex is one of those players that can get heated very quickly. Um, And I think RSL was playing him extremely physical and playing other players extremely physical. And Alex just probably felt like he needed to be the guy to step up. As a you know, he sees himself as a leader of the team type of thing, and and uh, so he stepped up and he tried to become more physical, but the ref immediately squashed it, and he didn't control himself, and things happened. Well, if I'm not, also if, did a lot of crying. If I'm not mistaken, too, well, too yeah, that that's that uh, for you. damn dreads. That was our first red card of the the season as well. I think you're right. Any actually. players? Yeah, no, yeah. no, because we haven't had any ten, yeah, we ten have, men games. Yeah, we've had mm-hmm. no ten men. Which games for us, and, really considering how physical we do play, yeah, that's a pretty it, robust pretty surprising. Stat type of yeah. thing. That's that's yeah, good call out, Josh. There you go. You're on your game five. Hey, y'all shut y'all's face. I've had a hey, little hey, break. Hey. No, no, he needed a two week break <laughs> to, to <laughs> recover. He <laughs> needed <laughs> recovery time, yeah, just exactly, like Elise in Kyoto. Exactly, exactly. Then you know, my my job just. That's so, okay. So Justin much will be training ta- every day. That's okay. Know, Justin will be taking weeks off here in a few here in a little while with uh, Philly. You know, well, being crappy in the NFL. Losing. I bet you we finish with a better record than the Texans, but that's for a different show. Oh, I will put you know, I will put a bet on the table outside oh, of the show. Can we can we man. can we get back on the topic of real <laughs> football? Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Josh. Please. I'm glad you went there. All right. That's right. Preach. So, uh, uh, okay, so we had we our four three three. We had our four three three. Uh, we don't need to talk about what they came out in because, again, no, none of their nobody scored, cares. So nobody cared. Um, another player that I feel like deserves a call out from that match is Memo. Yes. Um, he continues to be in form. He continues to make incredible plays in the ball. He continues to find ways to put his influence on the match. His goal, you know, the, the shot may not have gone in, but that was our only shot on target, and it forced uh, Ramondo into a pretty solid save. Um, you know, could it have been a better shot? Well, sure, yeah, but at least he had the effort on goal. Which nobody else for the team did. From outside the box too. Oh, I mean, yeah. you know, come on, that was incredible. You know, the kid, the kid's talented. He's showing, you know, what and, what and I want that, most of our future academy products to be. And that becomes the question, right? Who <coughs> whose position is he taking? Because it's going to be incredibly hard to take him off the pitch at this point. Oh, absolutely. You know, but uh, we can probably. We, 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 you don't even know now. You're like, I don't know what I'm. Thinking. I don't even know. I don't even know what <laughs> like I was I, gonna say anymore. Can we? Can we? Can we say he could start over? I mean, he's obviously Alex ain't getting the start next game. He's suspended. So, can we say he'd play in that position? Well, what about Tomas Martinez? I am. Uh, that's he's a different starting. conversation, you know. And I'm. I'm. I'm still upset we haven't seen any like seen him on the bench or anything. But you know, whatever. It's only been two matches really that he's been available for that he hasn't even been on the bench. So that's okay. I'm ready for him. We're ready for Tomas Martinez. I'm okay with them taking it slow. I'd rather them take it slow and him get acclimated but he's than a, them push him yeah, into it. Yeah, he's a young DP though. But the best way to acclimate your your team is put him on the bench. When Boney came over here, 
he immediately came on the bench and then came into yeah, his first was, game off the bench. That was the Dom regime. That was totally different back then. But he came out and helped get, help us get to an MLS Cup. I don't know how much I can put on Boney for that MLS Cup run. Boney was the one who scored in the playoffs against D.C. United. I, all right, yeah, I'll give you that. Yeah. But exactly. if it wasn't for Brad Davis, we're not there. If it wasn't oh, well, yeah, for, Brad Davis, I mean, that's a different know, story. Brad Davis, yes. If it wasn't yes. for other players but on the he pitch, was, we're not he there. Was a so. huge, but he was a huge asset to the team. I'm saying – Well, but, okay, we still, have, we still have, what, 10, 12 matches left of the season yeah. before we hit playoffs. He's got plenty of time to get time in. I'd rather well, wait, there's, there's I'd rather wait time, a little but, bit and but, get him acclimated. But not only do you have to get him acclimated to – getting physical with it, but you also have to build chemistry with your team. Now's the perfect time to start building chemistry. Start putting him on the bench at all of your home games. Give him an opportunity late Well, in the we've had one home game, and that was his, like, second... That was his, that was his first week having been, like, able to be on the bench. So maybe we see him on the bench this week. I mean, we've got an extra slot available. Thanks, Alex. Yes. Alejandro, we we better. That's what I'm saying. We better see him on the bench this week. No, I, I think there's a good possibility we do. I think I'd probably put it at 80 percent probability that we see him on the bench this week, and that's that's good odds that we see him on the bench. That doesn't mean he's going to get in, going to get any minutes, but at least if he's on the bench, I feel better that the team are bringing him in, type of thing. And uh, but at the same time, and I've said this before, Wilmer has given us no reason not to trust him when it comes to players. So whatever Wilmer decides, I'm all for it. Let's just keep going the way we're going. Results speak for themselves. Well, you want to bring up the scores? Oh, you want and, the scores for the yeah, week? Yeah, and then we'll, uh, we'll oh, go wait. into... Uh, uh, yes, hold on. I got you. I got you. Go into our first break. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yes. Saturday. All right, there you go. Saturday. Uh-huh. Uh, Saturday, we had D.C. United taking on Toronto. Uh, they ended up playing it off to a 1-1 draw to a shock of a ton of uh, Yeah, that, that's my shock. Including well, my fantasy team. That's my well, secondary <laughs> shock. Also... Weekend. Also, DC United scored their own goal. Yeah, and that yeah. came to Toronto. Yeah. Had to do nothing. To yeah, no, point. no. Yeah. DC scored twice. Yeah, D- just so yeah that's clear. exactly. Yeah, so DC could have potentially won that game. Save the next score for last. Uh, and also, just so it's clear, they also got a red card and we're down to ten. Minutes. Oh, yep. ouch, DC. Uh, that next match, man. That that that's a big one. It is. Yeah, we'll get that's to that one. Yeah. 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 Uh, so Actually, then, we should get to that one after the break. Montreal uh, ended up uh, coming back from behind against Orlando City, two to one. Um, beating them out. Mm-hmm. There's not a whole lot else to say about there's, that. There really wasn't a whole lot to say about it, but this next one here, the... Uh, the uh, go ahead, Sean. Seattle, Minnesota, uh, with Seattle beating Minnesota, taking them behind the woodshed 4 nothing. And I just want to call out, Bruin got another goal. <laughs> yes. Again, as I've said all along, Bruin was in the wrong system here in Houston, mm-hmm. um, especially once Dom left. And uh, you can see it in Seattle. He's in a system that favors the way he plays, and it just makes a world of difference for him as a player. Him, him, and, him and Deuce are playing well together, man. Yeah, He plays well with, with and, Morris, and too. Sa- sa- yeah, exactly. Yeah, he, I mean, and, and it, the Sounders are just, searching, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll yeah, get to that. we will. And so then there's uh, Chicago versus New England. Chicago winning 4-1. Um, Chicago's on a tear this season, so that should come as a surprise to nobody. I mean, if they had lost, it would have come as a surprise. But uh, I'll let you do the next one. Uh, Colorado Vancouver, two two draw. Obviously the the nil nil draw for Houston Dynamo and Real Salt Lake. San Jose and Columbus Crew ended at a two one for San Jose. Uh, and then Sunday's matches. It was a it was a fun match to watch. VAR was a point of the, or part of that one too. Uh, Timbers win at three one for LA. Did did. Uh, did either of you guys see the uh, tweet that uh, Portland Timbers sent out about the fading star phenomenon related to L.A.? Mm-mm. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, long time ago, right? No, 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 no. This was in reply to the one that L.A. sent a long time ago, and it is uh, phenomenal. Oh, I gotta, I'm going to have to I find gotta, it so yeah, you guys can yeah, watch it later. Look that oh, up, it's yeah. great. I'll try to find it during the break, actually. Uh, so then we had, uh, New York, uh, we had the New York Derby, and for the first time Derby, ever, yeah. City beat Red Bulls 3-2. Way to go, City. Wait, first time ever? No, City's beaten them before. It was David Villa's first hat trick ever. Oh, that's what Villa's it was. I knew there was some sort of MLS. history. Yes, yes. Yeah. Which, which we were talking before. That's hard to believe. That was hard to believe. Yeah, no, no. Uh, and then well, Villa, get, Villa doesn't always play 90 minutes. No. And so that's that's part of it, too. Yeah. Is, I mean, it's tough to get that. It's tough to get three goals within a half or within, you know, 60, 75 minutes. And so, you know, but when he was league is. MVP though too last year, you would think that he would But he was getting go- he was one getting one two goals a game, not three. But yeah. anyways, uh, so and then the final one. Sporting Kansas and Atlanta. Well, actually, there's one, one more after this, but yeah, that one on Sunday. 
Uh, that's actually good. We wanted to see KC draw, so yes. that's that's yes. a good thing. Yes. Uh, and then we'll come back and to then, the most important yeah, results. Yeah, to, the after the break, to help we'll us come segue, back to the, yeah. well, we're, we're going to lead them on. So VAR made its appearance in the first ever MLS match uh, in the 3-1 win between the Union and uh, FC Dallas. Way to go, Union. Yes, way to go, Union. It, awesome. it shocked me. That's awesome. Uh, we will get into the VAR uh, right after the break. Uh, Sean, where do they listen to us? You're listening to The Peel on YouTube Live, or if you're listening to us on podcast via SoundCloud, or via Google Play Music, or right. via iTunes. Your voice just needs like, I'm, some I'm kind over of, like, you guys. Like, some like, comfort <laughs> music. Hi, I'm Andrew Wanger, and you're listening to The Peel. Well, we're back. So uh, before we went to the break, uh, we were saying that we're going to talk about VAR a little bit. Uh, I played a huge part and made its history against the uh, against Dallas for uh, Philadelphia Union. Uh, I loved it, and especially after they scored, I was like, "Oh no, oh no, you know, oh no." <laughs> so, so VAR is one of those things that I think you either hate it or you love it, and there's no in between, right? It's 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 there for a reason because the officials are so bad at getting calls right or missing calls that are blatantly obvious that they had to find some way to deal with that. Um, and, you know, the only way that the, that, a, that VAR comes into play at all, um, and this is from the, like, rules and the way that it works, is it has to be, it has to be initiated by a referee mistake. Yes. So it has to be either a call that was a really bad call that's an obvious error uh, on the part of the referee, or uh, it has to be a call that was, like, a no call that was an obvious error on the part of the referee. So you're... You know, I, I think that's great. I think that's exactly how they needed to implement it because it doesn't affect the game to the point where it's a bad thing. It, it affects the flow of the game a little bit. But again, you're getting the call right. And in a lot of these, you know, uh, a lot of these times, you're talking about game changing levels of calls that needed to be made right. In this case, it would have been a it would have been a draw if it had counted. Yeah. Um, and so it was it was absolutely the right thing to do. Now, once the Dynamo were screwed by it, I'm going to be pissed off. <laughs> but, you know, we didn't have any instances of having to deal with it at all. I don't I mean, I think the referee probably, you know, phoned up to VAR because he had his finger on his ear or whatever. And that's usually kind of they're they're talking to the VAR. Um, but we didn't have any instances where it really came into play in the RSL match. Now, I think there's a good chance we may see something with the match this weekend um, just because I got a gut feeling on that one. Um, but, you know, VAR on the whole, I think it is necessary. I think it's good, and I'm really glad that they're starting to use it. Um, and I think we saw this weekend that it was really vital and really important to making things, making sure things are right. It was. Yeah, like, like I said, it, it, it did make its appearance. Uh, it, it did only show up in two league matches, which out of all the games that were matches that were played, it only showed up in two of them. And it screwed over two of our rivals. Yes. Yeah, which yes. is great. So yeah, it would have been nice if it was in place when LA Galaxy had scored against us and tied it up. He was offsides. So the yes. The, yes. the the first yes. one uh, was a disallowed Max Rudy goal. A forward uh, Christian Coleman for Dallas uh, felt uh, John McCarthy in the box. Yeah. Uh, which was they went straight to VAR right then and there. Did it go no? Because I thought I thought they allowed the play to continue because he didn't call it. It, it was kind of one of those. It there wasn't really enough time for the ref to really blow the whistle. It happened like that. Okay. Um, but they did go back. He uh, he drew the box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the way that works, just just so anybody listening is actually aware, what they do is the, they'll continue the play until the next stoppage of play. Yes. And that all of that is reviewable, no matter how long it is, and they go back to whatever the initial start of the play was that initiated the VAR, you know, call or whatever it may be. Yes. Um, now, what I do, I would like to see, even though it wasn't too, too bad, is the decision took about two minutes to, to, to come down. If they can cut that time down, it'd be are, a little better. I'm, I'm still not complaining about the two minutes. Are you, good at, are you good at like 45 seconds to a minute? I, I am. I think we get down there in the next four to five weeks. I think it's going to take that long just because you're going to have officials that need to get comfortable with the process and, and VAR that yeah. needs to get comfortable with, hey, what are we allowed to really push and for and what are we supposed to kind of sit back and just swallow our, you know, swallow the button on type it, of thing. Yeah, yeah you got to remember, like, you know, this is being implemented in all of FIFA too, you know, so yep. VAR is – and, and is is new to the sport. It's it's a game changer. It you know? is. And so VAR, it's I don't it's gonna take. It's gonna have its kinks that it's gonna work out. But the more consistent you're with it, because I know a lot of people are pissed off about 
how it was implemented in some of the tournaments, you know, like the Euro, or what was it? I'm sorry. Uh, the the uh, 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 Confederations Cup. Confederations, yeah, Confederations Cup, Cup, yeah. Right. A lot of people were pissed off about it in the Confederations Cup, but... It that, helped them get calls right. That's, yep. It helped them know, get calls so right, were, you know? The people that were pissed about yeah. it are the purists, and you know what? Well, Screw you, I'm sorry. But this I will say, this, we, let's, let's get over it. Kind of a side note, it's not even the first league that it's been implemented in. Nope, it's been first implemented First league was an Australian league. Yep. Um, yep. Germany's going to use it this year. Yep. Uh, so it's going to make, and as soon as it catches on in Germany, it's going to catch on EPL, La Liga. Oh, yep. so all it's all not all around FIFA? Not, not yet. yet. The, it, FIFA, there's a requirement that it yes. is going to be rolled out, but their requirement is like over a two to three year span. Yes. So you're not, you're probably not going to see it at the World Cup. No. But you won't. It see will it in, be there at it. the World Cup, but it will not be making calls in the World Cup. I guarantee there, you, they test like it during testing, the World Cup. Yep. Yeah. Just like they did here in I think I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it missing out on this next World Cup. And then I think I think it'd be good to miss out on this next World Cup. Until USA gets screwed out of ball, then the last match we gotta we gotta move this one on. Uh, yeah. Was the Portland Timbers LA Galaxy match when uh, Zardes, uh, in, in the 11th minute, his goal was disallowed due to a handball. Oh, I thought we called. said that one. Uh, we just gave the score. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, there was the VAR that happened in that So, one. yeah. Um, Man, the Galaxy are so bad. I just want to throw that out there. They are so bad this year. <laughs> okay, I, I, I've gotten Ziggy, right on Ziggy can't save you. On a side note. During bad. 93 test games, VAR checked 300 and, or 763 positive re- reviewable instances. Yeah. Only 28 were reviewed. Yep. So one thing about VAR, too, and I don't know how many people have actually seen the way that they've got it set up, but they basically have, a, a, like, three large TV monitors in a, in a room, usually in the stadium uh, or possibly back in headquarters, whatever, and they, they show nine camera angles per TV. Yes. So it's something like 18 to 36 different camera angles that they're watching at any given time. Um, and that's a lot for them to But You know what? They I mean, they all show the same play, right? So they're able to see it from different angles, make sure that they clearly, you know, clearly are able to see what's happening. But again, getting back to my earlier point, it, it's necessary because the referees have been that bad. Um, and we've seen the effect of the referees be that bad. Um, and we've suffered as a result of it. And you know, yeah, we're going to suffer some when the Dynamo have to take a hit because of VAR. But if the referee's getting the call right, then I'm all for it, and that's what matters more than anything. Let's accept. Let's accept right now yes. that this is this is the future, and it's going on. It's not going anywhere. VAR is here to stay. It will affect all teams. It Eventually, is. at some point in time, it will affect all teams. It and will. like Josh yeah. said, it is here to stay, and it will be a part of next week's match. So get uh, used to it. So get San used Jose. to it, yes. Get so, used to it. The Dynamo will be taking on San Jose this Saturday, 8 o'clock. Uh, the match is on Unimas and MLS Live. Uh, this will be the second match for SKC in uh, one week. They will be. They are getting ready to actually take on SKC, uh, which is over on the TV over No, they're here. getting ready to take on San Jose. Or did you say I San? said SKC. Okay. okay. SKC is getting ready to take San Jose <laughs> on. Sorry, that yes. was confusing. Uh, in the semi- U.S. Open Cup semifinal match Correct. Uh, tonight, Correct. Wednesday night. Correct. Uh, before traveling here. Uh, that's back-to-back road games for them as well. We have it on, so if you're going to watch it, yes. just come on up here to 8th Wonder and hang out with us. Yes. I couldn't tell if that was a girl or a guy. It's oh, a... God, don't go there. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, all-time against San Jose. 19 matches, 10 wins, 7 draws, 10 losses. Negative 1 goal difference. Uh, at home, a little bit better record, 9 matches, 6 wins, 1 draw, 2 losses, seven plus 7 goal difference. Uh, our last match was, which was this season, uh, August or April, excuse me, April twenty second, two nothing win. Kubo scored a PK in the ninth minute with the assist from Alex, uh, and Elise scored in the seventy second minute uh, with the assist from Alexander, who is listed as doubtful this week. So yeah, he's nearly back, which is yes. really incredible. That is awesome. That is from. awesome. Uh, I, I guess I'll throw the form out there, and you guys can jump off that uh, for San Jose. So San Jose in their last six, there's. Three zero and three, uh, with wins coming against Columbus at home and Colorado at home. Uh, they did drop their last straight three road matches. Uh, Hopefully that's four. Yes, they are one zero and five on their last six on the road. Damn. Three nothing loss to Seattle. Five to one loss in NYC at, or to New York Red Bull. Excuse me. Four mm. two loss to Atlanta. Two nothing loss to Portland. Their last road win was against Dallas. One nothing. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's kind of like I said. It's kind of like I said last week. Yeah. I just want to throw this out there. It's kind of like I said last week. If nobody's in the Dallas Stadium to watch it happen, <laughs> does it, did it actually, actually happen? happen? Yeah, that's that's funny. All right, you can go ahead, Josh. Yeah. Um, no, I, I was gonna say they they were the first in Dallas's uh, home streak. You know, so and they haven't recovered since. It, no. it, it, 
Dallas or Dallas? Yeah. Apparently not. Oh, not San Jose either. apparently has not neither. Not. Yeah, yeah, well, not. To, so to add to this, you know. uh, they are nine five and nine with a negative goal, uh, nine goal difference, mm. and their road record eleven matches. They're two one and eight. Two one and eight. Yes. So eight draws or eight losses. Eight losses. So they've so, got. So no, let's, let's, let's break no. this down. So you're saying wins, losses, draws, or wins, draws, losses? I had that one down too. <laughs> Wins, draws, losses. Wins, so draws, wins, losses. draws, okay. losses. So yeah. two wins, eight draws, two losses. No, correct? no. two wins, two one wins, draws, two wins, draw. one draw, eight losses. Yes. Eight losses. Yes. So okay. basically, they've okay. only won twice on the road. Correct. Okay. They are so they're basically the us. dynamo. <laughs> they're pretty much the dynamo. They're yes. basically the dynamo on the road. So yes. wow. So anything anything less than a win is going to feel like a loss. So for I us, said this to much. you guys in the in the messenger chat earlier today. This game feels to me, and this is kind of disconcerting, but this game feels to me like a trap, the classic trap match. Um, you know, because we're talking about a match um, where it is very probable, very possible that San Jose is coming in and they want to win this match. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, and, and we just we have to come out with energy and with intensity and not come out flat like we did against RSL. Um, and we've come out flat our two or three last matches. Even here at home, we came out right. flat. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, no. I, I was gonna say you're, you're saying you're saying coming out flat though. So, so the differences that that can be made though is, can we get at least or Kyoto? Yeah, or I, both? I, no, I agree so, with you. Yeah. I, I feel like we're gonna it, skip at the our very next least. break just because this conversation I can see going extremely well. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's yeah, fine. Yeah, screw the next break. Breaks yeah. are meant to be flexible. It's yeah, okay. Yeah. It's just they're I, there. I do so want to throw this idea, idea out to, out there because Josh and I were talking about it. What if? Here, here, here's our, our attacking core, I guess you could say. With, with Alex being out, what yep. would you say about Memo taking Alex's spot? So up top you have Kyoto, uh, Maro, Elise. In your midfield, Rico, Memo, and Cabezas. My only concern is that Memo plays best on the wing, and I would rather slide Kyoto in as more of a withdrawn forward underneath Kubo or underneath Morrow and have Memo out wide on the left side. So essentially, but you're still playing a diamond. You are still which, playing which a is diamond. What I'm, yeah. Which is what I'm really looking for, but to get those guys out there. Yep. I definitely think Memo starts. Yeah. Um, yeah I agree. Unless for some reason he decides he wants to start Boniac, which I don't would not understand. And there's nothing against Boniac. He, just, he hasn't gotten the minutes. I don't think he's the better player that would fill that spot right now. You know, he, he could throw us a curveball and start Holland. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna put my money on that. Actually, you know what? Probably not because isn't Holland still with RGV? Uh, I mean, they could recall him right now, but he hasn't been practicing up there. I don't. Yeah, I wouldn't put my money. Now, now he could throw us the super curveball, and we would all lose it in in the best way. He could start Tomas. Oh man, no, no, no! I don't want to. What does that say? Bad. What is that? Bad. (laughs) The only bad thing about that is that I, I. Okay, when you get a player of that caliber, you don't just straight up. You don't start him though. I'm just, I'm just saying he could throw us the curveball. He could throw a curveball. You ball. never know. He I'm, wouldn't be throwing it at us. All he could I throw say, it at San Jose. All I say is I trust Wilmer with the lineups. I trust Wilmer with these players. He's like, I trust Wilmer enough to say, Wilmer, you do you, and whatever hey, you decide well, exactly, to do, it's going to you know, work. Yeah, exactly. You know, and, and honestly, that would be like an M. Night Shyamalan. Kind of <laughs> It'd be, be the like, greatest thing ever. With though. a twist, Tomas <laughs> Martinez starts. I could, like, I could okay, see that. Okay. I wouldn't root against it. Don't get no. me wrong. You know, he I'd has played. Now, now, there's myself, another player that he's played in that position, which is Andrew Wenger. Because Wenger did play a center mid. Yeah. So. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, I don't know. I, I would like I would like to see all, all four of those guys out there at the same time. Memo, Morrow, Elisa Kiyo. Memo, Mario, yes. Lee, and Kyoto. Well, I, I, it's not. It's not necessarily even really. Uh, yeah. Now, I, I okay. Would, so yeah, let me ask you I, this I do, question. I do though. agree with that. I, I, I still Who? really want to do. I, do, I do really want to see Kyoto and Elise on the, Who on the pitch at the same time because this team has been a totally different team every time both Who of those does, guys are on the pitch. At but the same let me ask time. you this: Who starts? Because we know how Wilmer is. Kubo or Mario. Man, I, I know who I'm putting my money on. I'm putting my money on Mario. Exactly. I'm putting my money on Mario. Yeah, but. His Kubo has hasn't told. showed me Kubo. enough right now. Kubo, but it, it, it's going back to the factor of, like, you know, you have to earn your spot on this team, but we've seen Kubo, though. 
So you know, and Kuba's he's don't get me wrong, he's scoring goals. He's about to break Brian Ching's record, and he's he's not consistent enough for me though. He's not he's not a Brian Ching by any means. He's so, just not consistent enough for me. Um, Mario, Mario, on the other hand, he's more consistent. He seems to be more driven. He seems to be wanting to do it more. But, you know, I, it, it just seems – I want Mario over Kubo. I just don't see him actually doing that, though. So, and, and this is the – this is what I keep coming back to when this conversation comes up with friends. Mario came to us, and he developed from the time he got here. Yes. Kubo has had zero development as a player since he got here. Now, Kubo was already an established player with an MLS, whereas Morrow was not. But to me, that's a big deal because it shows that Morrow has taken to, taken to learn what the Dynamo have offered him in terms of time with RGV, in terms of time with Wilmer, in terms of time with Owen Coyle, in terms of time with um, Wade Barrett. He's taken what he's learned and he's applied it. He's become a stronger player physically. He was able. He's held up the ball a few times. That in in situations where I didn't expect him to do it, yeah. because when he came to us, he was a very light player. He was not a very physical, you know, physical type of forward. And now he is. So, the way I look at it, it if that is what he's learned in his time here, you got to keep giving him the minutes because what else can he learn that takes him to that next level and turns him into the true elite, you know, now, elite see, level striker? What I would. In that regards, what I would love to see happen is Kubo push him a lot harder yeah. for that spot because yep. I don't think Kubo is. I don't feel like Kubo's pushing at all. No, he's not. I, I feel like Kubo's trying, but I just feel like his play on the pitch. Okay, so let me ask you this. Long term, who's better Who's who's better long term? For Dynamo or in the general, better player? Better player in general, Mara or Kubo. Who's better long term over their entire career? I mean, remember, Kubo What's has one difference? good year. And Chivas. Okay, so this is what I'm going to say, Mauro, and here's why. Because Kubo's not going to be with the Dynamo in 2018. I agree with that. Oh, I like to hear that, actually. So, you know, one of the things, and we'll, we'll get into this more transfer stuff coming yeah. up, but um, Kubo's big transfer fee, the bulk majority of it, will be paid off by the end of this year, the end of this season. So he's a much more attractive player for a transfer for another team um, you know, trying to transfer him into their team uh, than he is right now. You know, we're talking they're you know maybe looking to spend five hundred to seven hundred thousand per year on Kubo. That sounds like a lot, but you know, for a player of his caliber, that's really not. And and I think he's going to go to a team outside of MLS or maybe LAFC. In LAFC, and I told you guys it's already they're going to be a dumpster fire this year, and it's going to be the greatest thing ever. In case you Thank didn't know, they you. signed Carlos Vela, but we'll get Thank you, that. Carlos Vela, for yeah. making Vela and Bradley happen. It's like been a dream of mine to see them <laughs> blow, both blow up on the pitch at the same time, and it's going to happen with L.A. But but we'll get to that later. Yes. Uh, so I guess back on San Jose. Yes. Uh, we'll start with you. What's your, what's your prediction for the, for the weekend? Are you looking at me or are you looking yes, at Yes, I'm looking at you, Sean. My prediction for the weekend, man, this trap match thing scares me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go... I'm going to go 2-1 Dynamo. Who scores? Uh, Morrow and... Morrow and Memo. The oh, double M's. Josh? M&M. I'm going to go 3-1. Yeah, I'm going to go 3-1 Dynamo. Um, I, would love to see, I would love to see Memo score. Again? I would love to see oh, Memo yeah. score. Yes, yes, again, yes. Um, I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going to say at least get the start. He scores... Uh, Mara scores, and then I, I, I'm gonna say Mims. Nice. Yes. I, I'm yes. gonna I'm gonna stay with Sean because uh, I don't I don't see it being a blowout. I think I think uh, the Quakes play bad. I don't think they play enough to get destroyed, uh, or play bad enough to get destroyed. Excuse me. Well, uh, it, it, from what it looks like from the U.S. Open Cup here, their back line is their starting back line. Yep. Jung, Jungworth only, and all that. Yep. So there's only gonna, one player that didn't normal starter that didn't start, and that's Wanda. Yeah. That's well, why yeah. I was saying it would be one well, or two. Well, no, Hika. Hika as well. But... Yeah, is, so, Godoy, is Godoy playing? No, no. He's still on the no. injury list. Oh, that's yeah. right. So, um, so Hika, so, Hika uh-oh, and, uh-oh. and Wando not... Uh, Hika uh-oh. and Wando uh-oh. not... Oh, uh-oh. snap. 
Oh, oh, it's a goal. goal. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> San Jose. What San a goal. San Jose just took what the lead against goal. SKC. Was that? Uh, in the fourth minute was of that, play. Was that Tommy okay, Thompson? So, wow. No, that wasn't. That was, uh, I don't know who that is. Yes, we will talk about Rafa towards the end. This show is probably going to go over an hour just as a heads up. Um, that happens. Um, yeah, but, I, but real the, quick, but what, 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 with what, the goals. Let me, let me finish what I was saying, though. Let me finish what I was you saying. You interrupted me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I love you, though. Go ahead. Uh, uh, with oh, the goals. That was so deep, guys. I love you guys. I think it's Morrow. And I honestly think Kyoto or Elise gets back on the goal track and they score. I'm, I'm fine with that. Yes. Now, as yes. to which one scores, yes. couldn't tell you, but one of them will score. Yes, I agree. I'll allow it. Yes. I'll allow yeah. it. Yes. Okay, do you guys want to roll into awesome. a quick yes. break? We're going to change things up a little bit. We were going to do the schedule because uh, we are on a time constraint with Carson. So we're going to go on break. We're yep. going to cover RGV. Yep. That gives you time Carson to call on. him, too. Yes. All right, so yeah, we'll go on break. So again, you're listening to The Peel live on YouTube right now. And if you're listening to us delayed on podcasts, you're listening on Google Play Music, you're listening to iTunes, or you're listening you sound like to porn music. Uh, SoundCloud. SoundCloud's the other one. We appreciate it. All right. Remick, you're listening to The Peel. Welcome back to The Peel. Welcome back to The Peel. <laughs> Are you okay, Josh? Yes, I was about to say it, but you beat me to the punch. Okay, sorry. Yes. Um, you saw nothing. Yeah, no. <laughs> so, it sucks that we only give about a minute to break. See what happened. All right, so we're going to go ahead and call Carson, get him on. I was supposed to do that already. And I wiped it up with a scarf. Oh, there you go. <laughs> that's, that's what <laughs> no, scarves we didn't, pay for, these, we didn't pay for these scarves anyways. All right, we're calling Carson, right? Yes. That's what we said? Yeah. Okay, just making sure. That's what we're doing. Go ahead and segue us into our uh, Rio Grande Valley moment. Uh, so they they did really well this weekend. <laughs> they did. Oh, um, uh, Carson, I can hear you. <laughs> Barely. Carson, can you hear me? That seems like a problem because he's no. not responding. How about now? Can, can you, you hear, hear us, Carson? 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 Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, what's hey, up? Carson. <laughs> so first of all, uh, hey. uh, I I don't want to throw a, a nice little. Uh, Congrats to the to RGV this weekend. That was a phenomenal game. Yeah, it was, and thankfully, like I, like I said in my article today, thankfully there was some um, jackass soccer writer who, who counted them out at halftime yeah. when they went down three one. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I, I saw and you. I, and by I the way, I saw you retweet was, that. Yeah. By the way, that was I great. I was gonna say, please do that every time they're losing. <laughs> now, from now on, just just call them out and then see if they'll just come back from behind. Yeah, that's why I told the guys. I was like, honestly, I'm always happy to look like a complete idiot if it results in you guys winning. That that uh, case by the eye. There's no shame in my game. No shame in my game. That's beautiful. These two have ADD next to me, Carson. They I'm are paying staring attention. at this open cup. I'm match. paying attention. <laughs> I'm, I'm, dude. I'm looking at. So, me. so Carson, <laughs> can you run down um, who scored the goals for RGV this weekend? Yeah. So the first one was Kyle Murphy. Mm-hmm. Uh, Escalante, great cross in, and then uh, to come back, it was Jorginho James, and then Escalante and Joe Holland scored the last two. I haven't talked to either of them specifically yet, but I'm very curious if they'll admit that either of those were crosses that went in. But, <laughs> yeah, um, they, they looked they like both, crosses me, looked like on the, re- crosses. the recap. Yeah, they looked like crosses, and it was great. Crosses, I like that. Shot cross. It was, it was, it, like they, hey, you know what? I'm not going to complain. Because if the, if if uh, if, if Holland is net, if, if Holland admits that if Holland admits that that was a shot, he shouldn't be playing anymore. It was such a God. it was such a crazy shot. I mean, it was like there's no way he was going for it. I agree with it. But that Jorginho James yeah, goal that was beautiful. Yeah, honestly, I could I could shoot the ball at the goal on purpose ten times and not score. So I guess yeah, if you can score across, it's even better. <laughs> uh, that's true. Uh, yeah, Jorginho's been great. Two goals this year. First ever. Uh, First ever two goals for the Toros this year and last year, and they both came against Seattle. Found That's awesome. Two. That's awesome. Nice. So with with the new coach, I mean, are, are things finally starting to look up for him, or is it still not enough results to really tell? Well, I'll, I'll be damned if I say that, they're, that I'm cutting off for the season. We saw how that worked out. But <laughs> uh, I don't know. The, the defense, even when they even when the comeback win, the defense is, is really, really shaky. Um, and I, I know um, Edson mentioned it, and I, and I echoed those sentiments. Kevin Garcia, I think, was a bigger loss than people realized. Um, captain last year, super good organizer and leader on the back line. 
Um, Bill Hughes looked good in the first two matches he's played, but um, the defense, I think, just needs to get short up. Um, Escalante has looked incredible the last few weeks, so if he keeps playing well, you never know. I think, as I said before, I think the big thing with Junior is he has to, you know, make changes. That's where he's really going to prove his worth, making the changes, and you know, he came back and won four to three. So, who am I to judge? Absolutely. Well, so, that's that's the same way I feel about Wilmer, right? When the Dynamo are winning and, and doing well, it's you can't question the coach at that point. I mean, they're doing something right, so it's the same thing. So after that win, where where does that put them in the standings, and who do we take on this weekend? They are 11th in the standings right now. Um, they're actually tied with the team they play this weekend, which is um, Phoenix Rising FC, and even the very, very casual soccer fan will know a couple of the players on that team. Uh, they Drogba. have uh, who? Yeah, Didier Drogba. <laughs> Who also, Omar Bravo and Sean Wright Phillips. So, yeah. um, this Who? could be like a Sean Wright Phillips all decades team. <laughs> all <Yeah>. decades team. <laughs> this is wait, the wait, over. Wait, this wait, is the over wait, thirty wait, retirement wait, team, right? Wait, hang on. When did Sean Wright Phillips go to Phoenix Rising? That's what I want to know. Uh, when Diddy A took over the yeah ownership. Yeah. He's like, I, I like I like that guy, Sean Wright Phillips. <laughs> I almost I'm like him over BWP. Honestly, Go ahead, Carson. I pitched it before. I want I want them to sign like Samuel Leto and like everyone we played on FIFA, like <laughs> Ronaldinho. Like, so so you want you want it to be the all FIFA gonna... team. You want the all FIFA team. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. original Ronaldo, uh, Rubino, just get the whole Might, line. As, well, might as well toss Maradona, Maradona out there too. Yeah. <laughs> Pele comes out of retirement. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! I feel like Freddie. I feel like Freddie Adu could fit out there. Oh God, no! Don't do that. That would be awesome. Don't do that. that would be oh, awesome. Carson, Carson, oh, right man. now, I love you for that comment. <laughs> that would That's be awesome. Beautiful. Oh man! <laughs> God, Freddie Adu. Oh. He was underrated. The Philly hate Und- right now underrated. is so strong. Underrated. <laughs> Freddie Adu. Underrated. Oh God. There out was, of there was all no the hype, signings, no out hype of whatsoever. all the signings yeah. the union made. Terrible. That one pissed me off the most. Terrible. <laughs> let's, not get off, the... let's not get off on Philly tangents now. Sorry, let's get sorry, back to sorry. We're going RGV way off playing topic. Phoenix Rising. We're talking about RGV. Yeah. So, what do you, what do you think, Carson? Uh, what's your prediction for the match on on uh, this weekend? I will go. I'm going to two-two draw. Uh, it's at home, and just for my own personal enjoyment, I'm hoping uh, Drogba scores a couple of crackers. He had. A ridiculous free kick last week. So yep. let's go two two. I'll say Escalante, Drogba, the hell, Sean Wright Phillips, and Joe Hahn. Oh man, if Joe nice. and Escalante can nice. get two goals oh, in yeah, two awesome. weeks, hey, that's man. fantastic. No, I, I will say Escalante has been scoring some really, really nice ones as of late, though, man. So I have a question for you, Carson, because I haven't had a chance <laughs> to talk to you much about this. But how has Joe Holland looked out there? He's looked good. He's he's a lot more creative in the final third than I kind of anticipated. Hmm. Um, he looks good. He he's got a pretty good eye when it comes to that final unlocking pass. Okay. Um, I think it kind of I don't know. I wouldn't say it sucks for him because you know he's a great player with Tomas Martinez, but um, I think that's really going to be his position. And obviously they made a pretty decent investment with Tomas. Um, I would love to see Holland just get to play a good chunk of games with the Toros. I don't. I've never seen the benefit of him going up and watching Dynamo games and not even getting the 18. So um, he looks good. Obviously, that, that uh, what do we call it? The sh- the cross um, goal he had last week. But the Shross, yeah. I-, I would like to see him down there more. He, he, he's a creative dude, and he's honestly, he impresses me every time he's down there. That, that's what I wanted to hear, really, because I haven't had a chance to obviously see him much, uh, really, at all, other than the one Open Cup match that he played here. But. Um, you know, they, they drafted him, and, and I was really curious when they drafted him why they drafted him. And, you know, you've kind of answered the question for me. I kind of had a suspicion that Wilmer and them saw something that I didn't see, and uh, that, that makes me happy to hear. I, I just hope that he continues to grow and develop and, and uh, gets that MLS level in the next two to three years. And, and uh, you know, worst-case scenario, maybe he and Tom Moss can even play together, uh, and that just opens so many opportunities. But... Uh, thank, thank you for that answer, Carson. I was really curious about that. Yeah, no, no doubt. You, I mean, you saw what happened when, when Mamo got a whole uh, season to play last year with the Toros, obviously. I like you guys. All predictive names to score, except, you know, the one goofball over there. But 
<laughs> Mims, yeah, nah, Mims nah, is nah, awesome. I'll, I'll Mims definitely yeah, Mims is awesome, man. We, it, we it, definitely want to see uh, our Academy product score. He, he's he's tearing it up and he's making us proud. Absolutely, and it's really hard to go against a guy who's in form like that too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, I hear you. I'm looking at Justin, giving him the, the stink guy for that. Yeah. But that's oh. okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Carson, where can they find you? They can follow me at Carson and Merck on Twitter, and then um, every Wednesday, my uh, the Hornets horns will be out. And then, as you know, you can find me that first week of September down in Houston. Yes, yes sir. sir. All right. Yes, sir. Awesome. Well, perfect, man. As always, Carson. Thank you. Thank you, Carson. The pleasure is mine. How, how about all three of you show up next week too? That'd be ideal. Uh, <laughs> that won't happen, unfortunately. Josh has already gone, said it's not happening. Yeah, I'll be gone the next couple weeks, unfortunately. But three weeks from now. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, they, it sounds like a date. He he yeah. has a reason this time. <laughs> oh yeah, oh does. oh! Are you saying are you saying for the game when you come down here for the game? Oh I'm, no! I'm sure I'll see you guys then. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, we'll we'll yeah we'll we'll definitely see you then. He was just Carson was just indicating he likes all three of us being on together. That's <laughs> yeah, all I, I know. I know. We we all love right. you too, Carson. Thank you. Thanks, man. All right. Thanks, Have a good one, man. All right, guys. Um, he did. He did bring up September. Can I just on a side note? I did. I did run into George Malky when I was at the game the other day, or the other day, uh, a couple weeks ago against Portland. Yeah, I was gonna say it wasn't this weekend. Yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> and I should have asked him. I was like, "Look, man, we need you back on the pitch. Uh, when are you coming back?" <laughs> and he was saying he was uh, he was hoping for a September return. He's come back. Uh, so I'm gonna he, try to make it out to a to, practice to, yeah. or this week. So if I see him. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'll try to get a little so update. That, yeah, he said he said he's looking he's looking like probably not on the pitch in September, but he is looking to be back into full training, training and, and all yeah. that in September. So, so that that's that's something to look forward to as well, okay? Because he's I think he's one of the underrated defensive uh, players. So. I can't right. argue that. That's complete sure. complete side note. Well, Sean, you want to set us up for our next break? Sure. So again, you're listening to the Peel live on YouTube. And uh, possibly delayed on podcast on Google Play Music, iTunes, and SoundCloud. <laughs> I'm Brad Davis, and you're listening to The Peel. Welcome back to The Peel, guys. Welcome back. Welcome back. Sean, get your, or Josh, get your eyes on. Sorry. <laughs> he doesn't need to see. He just no, needs he to talk. All right. Uh, so that is going to take us into the summer transfer window talk. Uh, a lot going on. Oh, man. A whole lot this year. A whole lot. Um, and I kind of like it. I, I like some of the younger players coming into the league now. It's interesting, right? It, you it know, is. like like other, other sports, other leagues here in the U.S., they have these days, you know, the, the trade deadline days and those sorts of things. And MLS needs it because it's, mm-hmm. it's something that – the something that the sports channels ESPN and Fox Sports and stuff like that it's something they can cover consistently yeah and something that they can formulate an entire you know day's worth of of coverage around type of thing you know and especially as it gets closer and closer and you have you have your specific guys that cover this stuff and things like that so it's good to see this is what I wanted to see for a while so I'm glad to see it well what is nice so I have a list you can't see it cuz of the light but other than like three other moves there's been some big moves made yeah, there um, have been. There really have been. Uh, you got Brad Guzan, uh, who's well, that, already been playing. Yeah, I was going to say, that move, that move happened off season. It did, MLS but it, it, it's counted under the summer transfer. Well, yeah, window. of course, of course. Uh, well, he was low, so he was brought in. He was loaned back to them, and then yeah. now he's officially back with Atlanta, so that's uh, why it's counted now. You had the trade that everybody knew. You had Dom Dwyer moving to Orlando City. That was big. It was big. Tomas Martinez yep. uh, transferring. That, that was, was our that big. A, that was our big. Was the, that a free transfer? I, I don't remember. No. No. Okay. Oh no 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 no. Okay. No, we paid a <coughs> two and a half million transfer fee for him. Three. Yeah. Two and a half, three million. Something like that. Lamar Lamar Nagel going back to Seattle Sounders yep. on a trade. That, yeah, that yeah. that that on one trade, caught yeah. me off guard because I wasn't yeah. expecting it, but he you know, was a good fit in Seattle. Yes. He was yes. not a good as good a fit with DC. Not so at it all. Makes a lot of yeah, sense. when they when they had lost him in Seattle, that was just that was awful. Well, you know, DC is DC's a dumpster fire. And and, and you honestly. know, speaking of DC, they just traded away Bobby Boswell to exactly. Atlanta yeah. too. Yes. So, you yes. Know, they're they're offloading it, and it's funny because you know, of course, Justin they're, retweeted it earlier. But they're offloading, but they're also adding players. In case you weren't aware, are. I don't know if it became official yet, uh, but their Paul Ariola is most likely going to DC United uh, yep. from Club Tijuana. Yep, uh, twenty-two years old, 
huge improvement for them. Three and a huge. half million transfer fee. Yeah, that is one of the largest transfer fees in. At least, it's definitely the largest for DCU in their in their existence, but it's one of the larger MLS transfer fees. And th- this is the thing, right? It's a Liga MX level transfer fee, and why that's important is because Elise, first of all, Elise is on a similar type of thing where you know he's coming from a, a Liga MX club. At, you know, if we were to full transfer, so that that cost is going to be really high. But that's my thing. Looking at Liga MX, the reason I'm, if I'm an MLS GM or an MLS, you know, coach or whatever, I'm not looking at Liga MX for players because they overvalue their players yes. so much more than other leagues. And I could find the same caliber, the same quality for a lot less money from other leagues. They're not going to have the name attached to them necessarily that players coming from Liga MX are going to have. They're not going to have that following, but I'm okay with that. You're usually not buying into that. And honestly, the only reason DCU is buying Areola, it's not so much for his play. Yeah, he's a great passer, 70% roughly passing percent. Um, but it's also offsides. Uh, it's also because he he's a name, and they need a name right now, a name that fans in DC are going to draw to and gravitate to, and that, that's exactly what he so, is for them. So before we get into our, our latest signing, uh, you also had Luis Gonzalez, yes. uh, midfielder, going to FC Dallas. Uh, Venezuelan played most of his career in Venezuela. John, Jonathan Dos Santos going to yes, LA Galaxy. Jonathan Dos Santos. Yeah. yeah, so you got the Dos Santos brothers. Uh, Ethan Finlay yeah, going Ethan to Finlay. Minnesota. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, there was y- one other that Yosh- I didn't know. Yoshimar Yotun. Yes, uh, he's going a big to Orlando. one. Yeah, that's a huge one. There's a DP signing for Orlando City. He's going to be a number 10 for them. Um, so with Dom Dwyer and that uh, Yotun. Uh, Heading to Orlando City. That, that's that's so. That's big is this for them. is this also closing the door on Kaká maybe being in Orlando next year? Probably yes, but I think yeah. Kaká's ready to retire. How sure. old is he now? Oh, he's got to be late thirties. Thirty-five. I don't know if he's that old. Actually, let's look it up while you guys are starting to talk about. Yeah, something else I, I, I would I would say he's probably like in his later thirties. You know, I mean, he's been around for a long time. <laughs> And you lost internet connection again. No. My ear, no, well, my ear. No. I guess the good thing is, is it will be on SoundCloud. So, yes. um, but with that, that does take us into our latest signing, uh, Philip Senderos. Uh, Philippe. Coming, Philippe, excuse he me. Is he is Swiss. He is Swiss. Philippe Senderos. Yes. Did I say that right? Rangers. Kaka, just so we're clear, is 35. Rangers 35. FC in Scotland. Uh, was a transfer. He was a trialist here for about, what, a week? Former Arsenal player. No, Former he, he Arsenal. was a trialist for exactly one week. One week, yeah. Uh, Arsenal, he's, he's bounced around EPL for a little while. Uh, I told Sean this was all his segment <laughs> on this guy. So one thing that MLS doesn't release and, and probably won't for a long time is going to be contract length. So I have no idea how many years he's signed for, but he's a full transfer. Um, as well, and, and really, it's more like a free transfer. We didn't have to pay a transfer fee for him, which is no surprise to anybody. Um, Matt he's, Jordan, he's doing Matt Jordan a, things. I can tell you, he's coming on a vet minimum contract. He's you know maybe making two twenty, three hundred k at most, um, probably closer to two twenty than he does to three hundred k. He's probably got quite a few incentives <laughs> uh, laced into that contract just because they had to get him a reason to, to play here. Um, but uh, you know, the the real key to him is. His contract, from what I've been told on length, uh, is probably like an 18-month contract. Uh, in that, um, you know, he's he, he's it's either 12 or 18 months, one of the two. But he's not he's not a long-term player. He's here yeah. simply to help shore up some stuff and, and my to, good and, and to just you know be that leader on the back line. My let, let, real, I'm sorry, not our back line. I'm, I'm sorry, real real fast though, line. real fast because you know I know a lot of people were talking about like the mixed reviews and stuff like Alex had just brought up there. Yeah. Um, but let, let's let's face it. A lot of the leagues that he has come from, it's MLS versus you know all, overseas leagues. You know the EPLs. Well, the, the, the lowest the, league the, he's played in is the Scottish Premier League, and he did struggle there. But part of that, I think, too, is that Rangers this year were not one of the better teams in that league. Um, and I, I think he he's not the type he's the type of player that will do well here. I'm concerned by some of the concerns that other other people had related to his speed and his lack of pace. But people said the same thing about Machado. They didn't think he had a lot of pace coming in, and we've seen he has pace. It's just in the recovery. People said the same thing about David Horst. He's not a pacey guy. They have the speed when they have to recover. 
they just don't tend to show that pace during the regular match if they can avoid it because, frankly, it's better for them to conserve those bursts of energy when they have to cover and recover on a fast forward or something like that. So I'm concerned, but you know what? Wilmer obviously saw something he liked. Um, you know, and not just Wilmer saw something he liked, but obviously Jordan must have seen something he liked. They signed the guy, and that's what counts. And I think we actually have a quote. Yes, in yes, yes. Thing. I do have a quote. Uh, and this was um, Wilmer was asked a question about how uh, Philippe has come into practice and kind of uh, become an on field leader, even in practice, and immediately has kind of uh, whether he's kind of taken on to that role of kind of directing players around on the pitch. Uh, as kind of an on-field coach, kind of similar to Vicente Sanchez, I guess, in a, in a way. Uh, but go ahead and play that. Yes, that's that was impressive, and, and that's something that you know you, the players themselves recognize that how he just came in and he asked, "What is your name? What is your name?" And he was talking with the guys in English, in Spanish, and uh, it was easy for him to organize and and also the you know. The, the the possibilities the influence of him on the players is great so it's it's good and we're really excited and happy that he decided to join us so you know he, he's talking about there and it's, it's really good to hear that Philippe has come into practice and and he's been able to immediately communicate with the other players on the can back I, line can I can I jump on that six languages yeah six well, that, languages that's actually very common for Swiss players though Really? Yeah, it's a Switzerland thing because they're surrounded by you know so many true. countries right yeah. there. Uh, Can I just say I struggle with English? <laughs> <laughs> You're from Philly. What do you expect? Uh, Sean said it, not me this time. Okay. <laughs> this is why you need to be on the show, so I'm not the only one bagging on on his Phillyness. Sean's got the perfect seat in the house because he can look at us and look at the game at the same time. <laughs> There's a reason I chose this seat that first yeah, week. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Uh, I was preparing in yeah. advance for this. <laughs> Uh, but I mean, I don't really have any real feelings on it yet. Well, the thing is, if the guy's not going to start, which I, I think is the most likely result, he's not in. He's not being signed to be a starter. He's not being signed to supplement or to take the place of Leonardo or Machado. He's being signed to provide that extra leadership. You know, in in late moments when we need to go to a five man back line. Or late moments, maybe even when we need to go to a three-man back line and we pull off uh, outside, you know, uh, or pull off, uh, uh, you know, whatever to bring him on as an extra center back in the middle of the pitch or something like that. But so essentially, it's a Vicente Sanchez defensive version. It's exactly of what yeah. I said earlier. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. It, it is exactly that. Um, but at the same time, you know, this is a guy that has World Cup experience, and, and uh, you know, Wilmer was talking about that. He, you know, he's been part of three World Cups with with Switzerland, and that's not a team you'd laugh at. That's a good good quality yeah. team with a good quality defense um you know and, and then he also played for arsenal he's played with uh he's played with premier league teams he's played you know <laughs> played with all sorts of stuff uh, in all sorts of leagues and so he's got a lot of experience he's got a lot of tactical experience a lot of technical experience um and by playing in so many different leagues too he's learned a lot of different styles of play especially as defense and so um, you know, that's important. You want your defenders to be able to learn how to defend against a lot of different attacking styles. Uh, and I think that's what he really brings. And then also, it's that on-field voice during practices like a Beasley uh, that, are, that he's able to come in. He's able to talk to players, especially the younger players, maybe a Kevin Garcia, um, you know, maybe a uh, Taylor Hunter when Taylor Hunter's up here playing defense in, in practices or what have you. Um, you know, and I think this is also just a, a kind of like a stopgap filler to just make sure that we don't have any, in, you know, if we have an injury to a Machado or an injury to Leonardo, or we need to give them a break because let's face it, they've been playing Iron Man level of games at this mm -hmm. point. Yes. Especially Machado. I don't think yes. he's missed a single game. No, he hasn't missed one, yeah. Um, you know, t if we need to give them a break at any point for any reason, you have a player that's capable of coming in for a game, maybe two games, and, and kind of alleviating them a little bit to yeah. give them that break. Yeah. And, and we've needed that. So I'm. I'm it's a good signing yeah. for that reason. It's a great signing because it's a veteran minimum and a minimal contract uh, in terms of number of years. You're not married to the guy. If the guy doesn't work out, the guy doesn't work out. You're not out that much money. You're not out that many years. Um, and, you know, you haven't set yourself back in terms of the development or anything like that. So from that aspect, it's a really good signing. And, and all the haters can kiss my ass. <laughs> well, Josh, you on that? Oh, no, I mean, I, I'm just going to agree with them on that. You know, just, just just focus on building around the team that you already have, the core on the team that you already have, you know. I, I, I still think that we truly haven't found an 
actual true identity in the team. Really, it's just a lot of counterattacking football at the moment. But but, but why? Uh, you but, say we don't have but, an identity, but if that's what our identity is, why can't that be our identity? I mean, it can't. It, it, it can it, it, it can essentially, but then but then you're gonna have to build up on the on the defense, and, which is which is what I'm getting into. You know, build around the core of what you have on your team. Let's be frank. I I don't I I, I see us I see us being well. There's being case to score you real to tie the game. Yeah. Yes, this is exactly what we wanted. Tire them out. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Tire please, both yeah. teams take, out. Yeah. Take yeah. Take them to take them to penalty. Take them to the full 120 yeah. with the PKs. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Exactly. All about exactly it. Yes. All take about it. Yeah. So. No, but I was gonna say just build around the core of the team that you have. You know. But but I feel like that's and exactly what they're doing at exactly. this point, right? Because exactly. you've got Memo and, yes. and you've got Luca yeah. who's still with RGV. And so you've build got around. Yeah. Build around the core because these guys, Vicente Sanchez and Felipe, C- whatever. Senderos. <laughs> Senderos. I probably still never learned the last name. Just uh, call him Philippe. We Philippe. know what you're talking about. Philippe. Anyways, but Miss build around that girl. and then offer that experience to those young players that you have that on guy, the that on the pitch. That veteran. And, and on you know, the I, pitch, I, you I know? wonder too if Cinderos may be looking to possibly go into coaching, um, similar to Vincente. I think we see Vincente in the next year, year and a half, end up with RGV as a coach. Um, and I'm wondering if Philippe may be the same way. So I lied. I do have one more track queued up for a break. Oh, all right. Well, let's I hit just a break. Over. So yeah. come, ba- come, in a, come back from the break. We'll have schedule for the week. And Dash. Carly freaking yes. Lloyd. There are some Dash and, of course, Carly Noid. Carly Lloyd. Carly had Noid. Car- Carly annoyed. annoyed. Carly wow. Lloyd had to, to the run her 90s. mouth a little bit. Wow. Uh, in along the schedules, we'll run through the standings, and we'll close out for the night. So, again, you're listening to The Peel live on YouTube and on delay through SoundCloud, Google Play Music, and iTunes. I'm Brad Davis, and you're listening to The Peel. Welcome back to The Peel. Uh, Shout out. I do need to give a shout out to Glenn Davis. He had Tomas Martinez on the night. So his show is currently running concurrent with ours. Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Yes. Uh, So definitely... Give him a listen. His stuff's loaded up on pod, or as a podcast too on a yep. was it a podcast arena? Yeah, um, I think you can also probably hit him up. I, I think his Wednesday show is on ninety seven five. Yeah, it is. Uh, you can you can check their site and they actually do list up their podcast his podcast on their site as well. Yeah. Um, but another thing too, if you're not following him on Facebook, make sure you follow Soccer Matters on Facebook and also yes. follow him on Twitter. He is an incredible follow on Twitter. He's got some very good insight into uh, the inner workings of the Dynamo. Uh, and then he's got his buddy who who uh, does the show with him um, on 97.5, which is I want to say it's Victor Arias. Yeah, Victor Arias. Yes, yeah. I've met him. Uh, I've met him down at practice yeah. a few times. Victor and I get along great on Twitter. I need to meet he's you, Victor. He's a uh, he's he's, he's a pretty cool guy. He's a very cool guy. Uh, if you could bring up the schedule for the week, I'm, I'm on it. In the standings, I'm on it. I'm already there, buddy. All right, sweet. Uh, I'm gonna turn your laptop. Yep, I'm turning. Uh, Saturday, we do have Seattle taking on SKC. It'll the be interesting to see Seattle. after that's this a, match. That's a yes. 3 p.m. Yes. game. 3 that p.m. Sucks. Pacific. Look at that. Well, that's 5 wait, p.m. Wait, 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 wait. They're they're SKC they're, they're, one yeah, win in their, their last, last five. five are the exact opposite of the, each yep. other. <laughs> win, win, win. Draw, well, win. Draw, draw, draw. Win, draw. But KC's also had open cup to deal with, and Seattle yes. hasn't, and that does go a long way. It does. Seattle, Seattle came back from behind though. Uh, Seattle had a lot. Well, yeah, I guess. I am curious to see how Toronto bounces back after the match from this past weekend against Portland. Uh, the match will be in Toronto. Portland hasn't been all that great on the road either. Uh, then again, that's that's a lot of that's MLS. MLS, yeah. yeah you we talked one. about that. Uh, yeah, and then the dumpster fire. DC United uh, hosts Real Salt Lake. Um, why y'all give me the boring one there? <laughs> <laughs> well, but DC just about made a that? DC just made a bunch of moves. So actually, no it, is, it has a lot of that. no. It has a lot of intrigue because you got Steber and you've got a few other players. And if DC get uh, Ariola, let's see how he plays in his first match. I don't think he starts. I don't think so either. But you know, hey, did, I got I got to give him Steve something. Birnbaum? Steber, no, it's Diver oh. or Steber. Oh, I was He's gonna a, say Steve Birnbaum is gonna have goal of the week for his uh, own goal last week. Um, uh, and moving on. Uh, so then we got uh, Columbus Crew SC hosting Chicago Fire. I think Chicago come into that one and and, and oh man, I want to say take Columbus down, but you know what? Columbus have been pretty good at home too. Yeah, they Col- have. Columbus are good at home, you know, especially with Federico Iguain, you know, and also off a side another side note, Iguain saying that this will be his last season with. Columbus Crew. Uh, it's his last season, you know, in general. But That's what I was thinking too. Yeah, is he going to retire? Yeah. yeah, he's got to retire. 
Uh, Either that or he's going to China to make money another, and retire. Another match I'm kind of intrigued about is uh, New York Rebels hosting uh, Orlando City. I think Orlando City will jump all over them. Uh, also, New York has a big match to prepare for in the middle of the week against Cincinnati, uh, which is a sellout in Cincinnati, which I wanted to cover a little bit, but maybe. I'm going to throw one at you just because, uh, and I'm going to counter you. New York play very well at home, and this is a home match for them, so yes. I would not count them out at home at all. I'm not going to count yeah. them out. I think Orlando uh, City still wins, but I'm not going to count them out. I, I you don't, think I Orlando City is going to I don't see beat. Orlando winning. New York, New York Rebels in... They just lost, lost to Montreal, so you know. Yeah, I, I, I do. I, yeah, I could see Dom Dwyer getting see, his look, first for you, Orlando. You had to, look, Josh, you had to take the crap match so that you could have your favorite <laughs> match. Uh, this is fantastic. FC Dallas is going to play host to Colorado Rapids. So, what's important about this match? And we were talking about this before because we saw the tweet come out about it. Dallas or this match is going to be on tape delay oh, in yes. Dallas on their local channel because they got bumped by the Cowboys preseason game <laughs> and preseason coverage. Not only is it bumped, it's bumped to the next day or no, it's bumped till ten o'clock that night. You know they're playing at your seven fan base, o'clock. You know yes. you're not important when you get bumped. Well, but they're also Frisco, so you know. I'm, I mean, no, nobody cares about actually Frisco. Dallas anyways. No, well. One thing, nobody cares about Frisco, and two, we're happy that we hit, we're on the Cube 57 because what are they going to do? Delay Family Guy 50 minutes to watch it. <laughs> so, you know. Josh knows exactly what comes on after every and, Dynamo match because it's like, hey, I'm just going to keep watching. And, it's like a Family Guy sandwich. It's before and after the games. Boy, that could go wrong in some hey, ways. Yeah, but you, would, yeah, you take it to the level. <laughs> uh, okay, so, so the next game we have is uh, New England hosting Vancouver. That game I has think some intrigue. Fest. I... I I like uh, New England in that match because I, yeah. I think New England... They play well at home. They play I mean, well I would at take home, New England, too. Vancouver has to travel all the way across the country. That's... Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And it's at 7 o'clock, which normally their starts are two hours later. So that, that does make a difference. You're right. Yeah. That, there you go. There's my uh, reasoning. I'm going to take this one. It's just funny how it worked out. Of course, you are Philly out. boy. Uh, Philly, Philly will be taking on uh, the Impact. At home. At Philly home. At home. They still had, other than the FC Dallas match, they haven't looked all that good on at home. Uh... I want to say they Montreal. Beat us at has, home. I want to say Montreal. No, they, they beat they beat the Houston Dynamo at home. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they did. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I think <coughs> Montreal. Anyone want anyone want to guess the score of that game too? Wasn't it like two one? No, it was two zero. Two zero. We were just going I do on think Montreal sneaks zero. in there. Yeah. yeah Montreal awesome. sneaks in there and gets a draw. Montreal's been playing not horrible. I'm gonna well, give. Uh, what's his name? Uh, does Does Mati? I don't know. They're, one of their new DP signings. I don't know who you're talking about. That guy, about. Piatti and Desmati. Oh, I'm yeah. serious. No, I, you I mean, mean the Italian trio. The Italian trio, man. They're yeah. freaking they're, – they're, they're amazing. Well, that's that's what Montreal are. They're we the Italian club of MLS. Yes. Uh, and then you have uh, LA Galaxy hosting New York City FC. Yes. I'm going to be honest with you. Jones is being shopped by Galaxy right now. They want to <laughs> get rid of him. And I foresee this being an absolute slaughter by NYC. Yes. Um, yes. And I could not be happier about that. Yes. So, uh, fantasy players, pick up Davavia. <laughs> Take all and, NYCFC. And, ca- and captain him. And then, of course, there's this really big game uh, Which the, the following I week. do. I do want to get into that real quick. Yeah, that's why I'm on uh, the U.S. Up. Open Cup, it's going on now. It's also going on next week, uh, next, next Tuesday. Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Uh, FC Cincinnati will be, ta- will be hosting the New York Red Bulls in the semifinal match. Can I just say they sold 16,000 seats? Yep. 16K in seven hours. For an open cut match, too. Let but, that sink in. But, yeah, no, no, no. And, and, and to be fair, Cincinnati has proved that they deserve and belong to be in MLS, not just as a uh, team, but as a club and a franchise. That city supports their team um, and supports them enough that I could see them easily being one of those teams that becomes like an Orlando. Real, real fast, if they come over to MLS, are they still going to have the Bomb Pop jersey? Of course they will. Um, They'll get Adidas to get, they? you know, because they have throwback jerseys every once in a while, too. Yeah, but it's a Nike yeah, kit. Yeah, but it's a it's a Nike kit. Though. Nike might not something. let them. Uh, yeah, it wouldn't be yeah. the Bomb Pop in the traditional no, sense of what we see. Yeah. But they would still do something similar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And who cares? There would still be people wearing it around the, the Oh, well, exactly absolutely. Around the stadium, no, I'm just matters. saying, I'm just saying, would they, would they still have it? It'd be, it'd be pretty cool to see that. But that match is Tuesday, 7 o'clock our time. 
So that's I not Wednesday. That's not Wednesday, which means you have zero excuse not to watch yes. and listen to the Peel Live. And do not be surprised if it also this match ends up on ESPN or Fox Sports. As of right now, th- that time slot is filled, but something will get bumped and it will end up somewhere. On oh ESPN man, I or sure Fox. hope so. It was so much fun to watch that Cincy. Uh, I bet you it ends up on watch ESPN. The on Cincy, ESPN3. the match before Cincy Miami. Well, the Cincy Miami match was fun to watch, but the the match before Cincy Miami uh, in Cincy. Chicago Fire. Chicago Fire. That was so much because oh, yeah. the PKs and oh, I mean Hildebrand was just out otherworldly they, they, level of amazing. They beat, they beat arguably one of the best. I mean, one of the best one MLS of the, franchises. Yeah, mm-hmm. right now. Yeah, right now yeah. one of the best MLS franchises. So, well, that's going to do it on the schedule for the week. Bring up the standings real quick. Uh, we'll just go over the West. That's all we really care about. Running through it. Uh, we got Sporting KC with 37 points, uh, taking the first place spot. Houston Dynamo with 34. <laughs> so, so there's a four way tie four-way for second tie. right now, which yes. is crazy. It's amazing. Uh, that's with Houston, Dallas, Seattle, Portland. I'm sorry. Hang on one second. Hang on. Hang on. Uh, I was gonna say we're the only team. No, I'm sorry, but then Sporting KC. 30. So, so just so it, Yeah, there. actually, that's a good call out though, because 34 points gets you yeah. into sixth place in the east and yet we're all tied for second also in the West. Yeah. fun fact if we win this weekend we'll have more points than the total points last year acquired by the houston Dynamo. yep yep and well deserved at that yes mm-hmm. uh, dallas does have two games in hand on us um which is a little frustrating but we do have a game in hand on portland uh we're same number of games with seattle and that that's important because it means that seattle can't make up ground in terms of additional games. The only one that can make up ground is FCD, and if they continue their piss poor form, then we're clear. Yeah, I mean we really are. Like I mean we have to worry. You know if if, if we lose this weekend, that moves San Jose actually above us. Mm-hmm. But if we win this weekend and SKC ties this weekend, then we're one point behind SKC, and we're probably in second tied with somebody else still. But we'll be clear of you know Portland and we'll or, uh, clear of Dallas yeah. and, and uh, hopefully I, Seattle. I just I just hate that that it takes one game to separate seventh from the second place. That's the scary part. But you wouldn't know? you rather have that than that's why it's say like now now, now, it, now it comes down to scoring goals, which is what we're good at at doing home. So you'd, I, I'd rather have that than what we have over in the East, where you yeah. have Toronto at forty four and Chicago at forty one, and then Your New York City at forty. Teams. 30. Yeah, no, I, I, I like the parity level of the West right now. And to be fair, you know, the West is that is that conference that I feel like the MLS Cup winner is going to come out of the out of the West. Because these are these are teams that have had to endure the struggles of playing other West you know, other Western conference teams. And I feel like the East is just it's a lot more meager. And that just makes it easier for coaches to schedule around and that sounds terrible, but it's true. Yeah. The last Let's see. Hang on. Speaking of that, go back up. Go back up. The last five, six. Five. I'm sorry. The last five, <laughs> five. MLS Cup champions are, came from West Western Conference, correct? That sounds right. Yes. Pretty sure. Because it, I mean, Western Seattle, Conference has been so de- Seattle, dominant. Seattle, Portland. Seattle, Portland, LA, LA. Galaxy. Who was who was before that? Was that? SKC. 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 Salt Lake. LA no. Galaxy. LA Galaxy. And 2010, it was... None of the teams in the East, and that's all that matters. None of the teams in the East. So, wow, yeah. Uh, it it might that, have been yeah. Columbus Crew wow. back in, like, 2012 or something. No, but, I mean, no, you're still talking yeah, five years regardless. No, that's, like, 2008. Yeah, it's been nothing but Western Conference MLS Cup champions. You can thank LA Galaxy for majority of those, but... You know, it, it's it's just been well. It wasn't that way until SKC made their move over to the West with us. Yeah, but you know that's neither here nor. So, also, it should be called out. The top two teams in the West are the two teams that made that move. Yeah, that's that's interesting because whenever when we made that move and when SKC made that move, we were yes. told we yes. were told you guys are going to struggle in the West. Yes, we did for a few mm-hmm. years, but look at us now, bitches. Yeah. 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 Well. Well. Okay. Now I will take that back because when Sporting Kansas did win the MLS Cup, they, they were, were in the, the Eastern East. Conference. Okay. And so we let's had come out of the back. East as yes. well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So but moving, also we were screwed out of there. Yeah. Way off topic. VAR, thank you for being here. Yes, right? <laughs> Moving on. Uh, Dash time? Rapids won in 2010. Jeff Strong believes. Rapids, that's right. R- Rapids. Um, yes. Rapids. Moving on, Houston Dash. Uh, they did unfortunately lose 2-1 uh, to one against Port- the Portland Thorns this last Saturday. You know, it was a, it was rap, the break rap. in there. 
it was the break in their winning streak, and it was going to happen at some point. It was six games unbeaten, um, and in NWSL, six games unbeaten against the level of competition, that's pretty unheard of. Yeah. Um, and it came to the Portland Thorns, and they are a really good team, and they played. We played really well, actually, we did. in that match. We did. Um, and Jane Campbell came up with quite a few good saves. Uh, Should have been saved something I do week. want to throw out there towards the very end of this women's soccer talk, which I found a little interesting, um, and I didn't think about it till now. Uh, they do drop seventh in the NWSL table with a record of six, eight, and two. Yep. Uh, they do fortunately take on the last place FC Cincinnati on Saturday at seven thirty here. Who the do they take on? No, that or, you're uh, FC totally Kansas City. Wrong. Excuse me, FC Kansas <laughs> FC City. FC Cincinnati. <laughs> wow. FC Kansas City. Mind blown. Uh, which they FC uh, Kansas City does play the first place North Carolina Courage on Thursday, so it's a very short rest for Kansas City. Yes. So, um, <laughs> shut up. I know what you're trying to do. I was giving it a look of like, <laughs> hold on, I'm trying to catch um, back up. So, things mo- should play out in the Dash's favor. Uh, yes, it should. Which is good, because they, they need a few things to fall their way. Yes, with the Dash, Carly Lloyd had to put her name out there again. Carlos, uh, Carlos, Carlos. Uh, irritating me. I have no problem. Uh, and I, I kind of hope that we get... Yeah, that's her nickname. On, I kind of hope that we get blocked by her, because I would love it. We aren't uh, already? No. All you have to do uh, is just tweet her that you hate her and she'll block you. <laughs> That's not a joke either. This <laughs> this article is a little dated, but it's it's the fact that it's out there in the public. She doesn't close the door on the Man City return. No, of course not. And then she is very high on NYCFC fielding a women's team and that she would move there. Well, okay. I'm going to actually... Okay. Anybody who knows me on Twitter knows that I'm not a Carly Lloyd fan. I'm going to defend her on this one. That's her hometown. It is. She's from Jersey. So you know what? I applaud her because she's trying to gain some support and some some, some momentum for Jersey. Now, you can argue that she's a Dash player right now, so she should be there. You go. She should be supporting the Dash. And, and she does on Twitter. She does support them it, it pretty heavily. She, you know, she does stuff on social media. But I can understand why her heart's not here in Houston. And to be fair, she should have never been brought here to Houston. It just was a bad idea from the beginning. We had a bad front office at that point handling the NWSL stuff, and it, we just are still trying to recover from that. And I, I hope that NWSL seriously consider bringing in another franchise up there in, in Jersey, in that general area, uh, in slash New York, uh, with uh, NYC uh, from the city franchise, so that um, so that Carly can go up there. Because I guarantee you, we would make that trade in a heartbeat for you oh, know, yeah. for whatever it is we get out of that. My. Another issue for me is, yes, yeah, she wants to go to Man City. Great. But you also have a lot less pressure there. You gather, or you have 4,000 less fans average watching your games. More money, less pressure. Well, and, and to be fair, though, that's the athlete dream. It is. That's your superstar athlete dream. That's but your it, LeBron it, going it to Cleveland. It irritates me. I'm sorry, uh, did I say that? Out I'm going to close that out. Uh, on, He's literally on. throwing that paper away. <laughs> Thanks, Edson. I mean, it, it, it is what it is, and, and yeah, it, it's just I understand where she's coming from, and I applaud her for at least having the balls to stand up and, and say. Then what do she it behind. Then don't do it on the record. Don't do any of that. Not while you're still playing. Karate. I have no problem with it. If a Dynamo player came out that was, you know, if Brad Davis had come out as a as a proponent of St. St. Louis FC, which he has, and even when he was with the Dynamo, he did publicly like support their their push for MLS. I had no problem with it then, and I have no problem with what Carly's doing for it, trying to do for NYCFC. I just think because of how small the NWSL is and how... Well, she's a higher caliber player in terms of publicity than a yeah. Brad Davis is. But I also think at the same time that because of that publicity, she needs to leverage it. She, well, but why does she care about NWSL? She has no commitment to NWSL. Her commitment is to U.S. soccer. NWSL does not going, play okay. her contract. I'm going to ask you real quick. Why are you going to WNBA? Well, I don't know. We're on we're on the NWSL, so I mean, we might as well go into WNBA while we're at it as well. Wow. Yeah. By the way, Josh's yeah. opinions do not reflect the opinions of <laughs> oh, the field I'm sorry. or any host. Oh on the field. no, I'm sorry. No, my bad. Wow. I love bad. the NWSL. This is I why. This is. I'm sorry. This is the exact reason why I don't like women's soccer because of players like Hope Solo. Carly Lloyd. Well, Hope Speaking Solo doesn't think, play anymore, I think but it's, that's okay. I think, it's, I think they're crap. I think it's all crap. You know, and it's like, you know what? We might as well go freaking watch the WNBA. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to argue it right you know? now, though, and Josh. That, and that's, that's why I have fallen off. I, 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 was, I was watching the women, 
you know, the women's soccer team back when, you know, they were in the Olympics, back when they were winning the World Cup, all that jazz, you know. But after that, it was just kind of like there was so much crap that came up from well, that. Okay. You mean no. drama? Is that drama. There you go. Okay. Drama. Let, let Justin right, make right his point. Yes, their <laughs> egos are overinflated right now. But the whole pay to play or their their contracts, they deserve to get paid. Guess what they have that the men don't? They have stars over their crest. Number one. Number but two. There's no no, 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 no. Hold there's on. There's no competition. It doesn't. No, there's no competition. That's false. They will not no. win the World Cup. Brazil. Germany. They Germany. Brazil. They will not Germany. Win the, Japan. France. But they will not France. win the next okay. World Cup. Let's no. be honest. But they are they are the other stronger teams that are out there. And look, and let's look at say that, wait, let's look at say right say, now. Can you say right now that that USA could beat those teams in no, the World Cup? No, no, exactly my point. Okay, my point. But it has developed that so means, much in women's world in women's soccer. Then that now, means right now overseas. your argument is, is false. false. Okay. How is it <laughs> false? You just went like because completely opposite. You're going to see false. You're, you're essentially saying it's boring because they're winning everything. Okay. No, not at all. That was essentially no, your argument. No, I'm saying, I'm saying, I don't give a damn about it because it's just nothing but drama. But there's drama in men's soccer. But, but Are you I not think, following there has been EPL? Wait, 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 wait. No, I got I the don't, perfect don't segue. Follow, perfect I don't, segue. I don't, I don't follow perfect EPL. Perfect segue. You're gonna love this. Perfect I don't follow segue. EPL. No. There's drama in soccer in in men's soccer. We just had Rafa Marquez or turn himself in <laughs> as a kingpin. <laughs> that's funny drama. As a kingpin now, of a drama. drug. Yes. Uh, of a drug system, I don't even know of a cart, drug cartel. Yeah, that, that's of a drug funny cartel. stuff. That's crazy but talk. Women's soccer as a whole is vital to the growth of soccer in the country, whether you want to face it or not. Did, did you enjoy if the there Neymar wasn't drama? So much about. Did like, you the enjoy whole... the Neymar drama between Barcelona and uh, him getting bought by PSG? Oh, I don't care about that. Okay, yeah. well you're one of I don't very care about few that people at all. that don't care yeah. about that. No, I, I have, I'm Major League Soccer and U.S. Soccer through and through. Yeah, and if you're a U.S. soccer player like Christian Bulisic playing overseas, I'll, 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 yeah, I'll follow you. Other than that, in general, and here's yeah. where I'm gonna throw away any argument you can come up with. In general, you need women's soccer to be good, and you need MLS to be good in this country not nece- not to grow the sport in the country. Not necessarily. No, what you about do. NBA. Okay. No. What about, and what about? WNBA? I'm not talking about NBA. I'm talking about soccer. I'm, I'm, you go I'm to talking BBVA. About sport in general. You go to BBVA. How many times is it three quarters full? But I'm talking about a sport in general. Okay. Okay. I'm talking about soccer because it's a soccer podcast. Yes, it is a soccer podcast. You go to BBVA and it's three quarters full. Okay. You start pumping up MWSL. You start marketing MLS like it should be. You will get more people there in your local region. Not necessarily. Saying women's soccer isn't isn't popular but or talking, isn't important. Separa- I'm separating men's soccer from women's soccer, just like I'm separating men's basketball okay. from women's so are basketball. Okay, so are you saying that, is that the biggest thing? Are you saying an eight-year-old soccer fan should only follow? No, chase, okay. your dreams. chase your dreams. No, no, no. no you're yeah, not. You're, you're not letting me finish. Are you saying an eight-year-old fan should only follow the dash because she's a, she's a woman? Not at all. No. Okay. But then that's where I'm saying that the importance of NWSL and the marketing of NWSL, along with the marketing of U.S. soccer and MLS, all matters in the greater the greater cause of all of this. Not at all. No. Not at all. No. Absolutely. Sean, what not. do you think? I'm not trying to do this. Yeah. Hell no. <laughs> I, I, why? Under, why, I understand why both the, sides why of the, the argument. Why does the NWSL matter? They're not doing anything for it. The women obviously don't do anything for it. Obviously, their competition's getting a lot bigger because I'll, when they were winning the World Cup, when they were winning the Olympics, I'm gonna get Haley Carter on no with us next time, and I'm gonna uh, was next time no he's on with us, I'm gonna to get it. Haley Carter in here. Oh, she's gonna destroy Josh. <laughs> she's gonna <laughs> take no. him out so hard. It's there was be great. no com- There was no competition in it. There is competition. There's not. There, look now, how close now there is. Look how close these teams are in the standings. Now there and tell is. Tell me, there's not competition. This is the NWSL. Yes, but would you rather have teams extremely close and making the playoffs than a ten point this difference between the second the thing, and third Josh. team? The, the, the first the thing. four teams make it. This doesn't matter. Here's, but here's there's the thing, only ten Josh. teams in the league right now. These this are, matter. without a doubt, the best players in the world coming over to play in our league. We have players from Brazil that are playing at the highest level. But don't you have this pl- is you, premier? Have, this is early players, Premier League level. But this is early Bundesliga like, level. But then you have players this like is Carly, early Ligue level. But but then you have players like Carly Lloyd wanting to go play over in Manchester City. Then you have players like because it's it different Alex seasons. Morgan wanting to play over. It's different seasons. They play different seasons, and 
uh, by going overseas and playing in England. You probably didn't know this, but by playing in England, they get a chance to play in uh, the Champions Cup over there. They don't get to do that over here. But that's not to say that's not something that's going to happen at some point where we have I mean, like, a club You're still talking about NWSL, and it's still in its infancy. It is. But the growth and the stability of NWSL as a whole matters in soccer it's culture vital. in this country. It is absolutely vital to the I, I, long-term I can, stability of U.S. Dis- soccer. I completely disagree with that. No, I Josh, don't think it's that. Just it's a like, good thing you're not on the podcast NW, next week and the week after. I don't think it's, NWSL is vital to the growth of Major League Soccer. No, he's, I, he's, I'm he's not got saying... Right, I don't, I'm he's got not a right saying, to his opinion on it. Yeah, I'm not okay. saying Major League Soccer. I'm saying, saying soccer as a whole. He's talking about the talent pool for soccer. I don't think NWSL really matters to soccer as a whole here in it's the It's a conversation States. that's going to take us well past two you know, hours. You know, so many people, it you really know how is. hard it is to convince people to just watch soccer in general? Jeff what brings up a very good point, and watch, I'm going to close it out. What do you think makes them going to want to watch women's soccer? Somebody was the name. Was, take was, Megan Rapino, no, Harley take Lloyd, Morgan Bryant. Someone, the someone thing is, is I've taken just people. Just the other day, he was like, i will pissed off because I'm going to an Astros game. I have to pay for parking because of women's soccer? you got to pay There's for parking no anyway. No, he went to go. Pay, he went to go park in a free parking spot that he always parks in, and he's like, "I have to pay because the dash are playing." Who the is hell that, is the dash? Because that matters in this conversation at all. Oh, he I'm had to saying, pay what five dollars to matter. park? Oh no, my god! Saying, wow. NWSL does not matter for the growth. So of for the soccer. fifteen people that didn't get their free parking spots for, for one soccer. game, but I'm saying so, it does not matter for the growth of soccer. People don't even know what the NWSL is here. No, but they don't. But that's, that's the problem. Going to grow but over time as the but growth of the Jeff, league grows. Jeff Strong brings up a very good point. NWSL is where MLS was ten plus years ago with the struggles. Yep. Give it time. It's gosh. it's an infancy league, and, and they're going to have to change some things in terms of the, the contract structures and, and letting teams actually pay their players directly instead of having I to do, go through U.S. soccer. I do want you to go look at the ratings on the last Women's World Cup and the Women's Olympics. Well, because USA has been the one winning it. That's I, why. Even outside of the U.S. No, it was Those, Germany and – what was it? Germany and France. They, they drew ratings massive the ratings. Massive ratings. But because it's, also, it's big now. It's because of the names. Those names are playing here. Nadine Angera. She was the goalkeeper for The Brazilians. Portland. The top Brazilians are playing here. Andressa I'm, is playing I'm still for the Dash. i go ahead and say NWSL for me – Means absolute nothing. Well, that, that's fine. That's your opinion. How nothing. many? How many? That's my opinion. Yeah. How many dash games have you been to? Two. 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 Uh, one and a half. One and a half. One and a half. You didn't even stay yeah. for the whole thing. No. No, the, the double second. header. I'm not gonna yeah. lie, we left. Yeah. The, oh, the yeah, double, double header. Yeah, we, we stayed left. Longer yeah, than we I stayed. Did. Yeah, I we watched the, the Dynamo match. game and then we, we left afterwards. Ate food. I was okay. So moving on. Moving on. We have more to talk about. Just real quick, something I did want to throw out there because the article came out two days ago. Hope Solo apparently wants to come back and play. It's never gonna happen. Get on, move on. You're not playing in an NWSL. No. You sealed your fate by opening your mouth and throwing your coach under the bus. She's Hope Solo. She sealed her fate by just being Hope Solo. Jeff brings up another point. Thank you, US Jeff. ratings are high, and they haven't won anything. <laughs> that's, that. well. Then, because we want yeah. to watch them win. Oh, I'm going to tell you right now, though, Josh. We want to watch them win. World Cup final at Lucky's, you couldn't even get into the back room. So when they were there. playing, when they were playing I World was Cup, there. they were World. All the World Cup matches were streamed live over at or played yes, on the TV at Phoenix and the Phoenix and, mm-hmm. and uh, whatever pub it is over there. Yeah, Phoenix. And I final. went to two or three of those matches, not just U.S. matches, but other matches as well. And that place was packed. Yeah, and and it was incredible because it, it, there was so much support, and that happens because of the NWSL being here because these players now. Have fans that are here but in the U.S. Didn't we, didn't we watch? We watched the, the if final. I'm not mistaken, we watched the final here. Yeah, together. they moved the final yes. to Luckies yes. because of how and they how gave much it. They, were, they gave it an entire, an entire drive. That basically, they gave it all of Orange Avenue with a big screen. Yeah, 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 yeah. The whole I forgot about that. Pe- the whole yeah. five people watching out there. Well, that's because they'd rather be inside with the AO. And you're saying it was packed. It really wasn't. And I've no, seen, I've seen the more back USA room. The back room was packed. packed. I will even get Megan to clarify that. The back room was packed. I was in there. It was really not that packed. Because I remember driving from work. I barely had a place to stand. Oh, the the no. only thing I will say, and, and I'm going to give him credit on this, is that the only drawback to having two teams in the same market in WSL, you know, in MLS, is that it's so much soccer in such a short period of time. I find it difficult to make dash matches throughout the season because I'm yeah. already I'm already spending so much time dynamo focused. 
that I really don't have time for the dash, especially with this now. But even before that, I mean, it was it was I, I the first and second year that we had the dash, I was had season tickets to, for both years. I went to nearly every match, both first and second year. And I could tell you that at the end of those two seasons, I found it a struggle to make Dynamo matches because I was so worn out from both Dash and Dynamo, you know, back to back and that sort of thing. So, um, you know, from that standpoint, I can definitely understand what Josh is, you know, to some degree trying to say a little bit is, too, that it's a market saturation thing and there's just too much. It, it needs to be that a lot of these teams need to find a, a home outside of the same market that their that their MLS teams are in. But and the next thing is, why would you why would you care more? Why would you care more when Carly Lloyd is saying that she wants to go off? It's to not about Carly. Ignore Carly. It's, it's not it's about your. Than her. It's really not about your top U.S. players. It's not. They're the egos. Your top U.S. players are your egos. Your players that it's about are your Andres Sinas, who are your. <laughs> You know your top Brazilian players, yep. your top Germany players, your top France players, your Amadine Henri's, your I mean you know players that that you just don't know of your your sausage uh, player you know German players, your play, Australian players coming and playing over here, your your um, uh, Sam Kerr's I couldn't think of her name there for a second, your Sam Kerr's coming over here and playing and they're growing and they're developing over here and it's growing the league because other players that are top players for their respective women's national teams are seeing these players, not U.S. players, these players come over here, not only play, but also develop in NWSL, so and ne- they're going, ne- I want that. My next that. question is, so since you've seen, like, a lot of the a lot of the quality and a lot of the... Yeah. A lot of competition growing in other countries. Yes. So how long before they start making their own league and before all those players start some playing? Are, in some are trying to. That's why that, that yeah. England's trying to do the same thing with the premier, the, the women's premier league over there. But see, that's good as a whole for the growth of it women's is. soccer. It is. Because My argument wasn't just about women's the US. soccer. The U.S. And it, it was, wasn't it just was about the U.S. The growth either. of soccer in general in this yes. country. Yes, yes. It plays a vital part. It gets women, it gets women interested in the sport. So you have us who are junkies about soccer, especially like Sean. We will watch no matter if it's men's or women's. You have to you have to cater to both okay, sexes in order like to grow that, that okay, argument. Okay, when you put it like that, yes. Okay, when you I put it like that, I think we yes. just sold him. Yes. Okay, <laughs> well, you put it totally a nerd Y'all high five, up. but that's okay. But I, I, I do yes. have to. We, we do have to move this on. Okay. Thank close you, Jeff. it out for the Thank night. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff, for chiming in. And just remember, you see. can always chat with us on YouTube <laughs> during during live shows. Love you, bro. Um. But that is going to do it for us tonight. Yeah, um, we, we finished our beers except for Sean. Yes. Well, I'm a slow drinker. I do want to dedicate this on behalf of Josh um, to his his. Yes. I, I'm going to say poor, puppy because every dog's pooch. every dog's yes. a puppy. Uh, yes. So his puppy Jade, she was one of the most yes. adorable, loving dogs. Even though she probably couldn't see, she it. couldn't it see cute. a damn thing. And she could hardly ever walk, but, <laughs> but you know what? She, she, she could old. find her way yeah. to food. I'll yeah, put it that exactly. Yeah, that's all that. She could but. find. Yeah, she could smell and find her way to food. So, but she know, is yeah. off to yeah, a better she place. She is off to a better place today. So, um, you know. But yes, well, I, I would. I would I'm cheers, empty, but you know. But yes. cheers to so her. This episode, yes, dedicated to that's why I say my dog. Rest in peace, lover. But that's gonna do it for me. I'm Justin. I'm Josh. Oh, Sean. I'm Sean. Go ahead. Uh, real quick, Josh, where can they find us? <laughs> yes, guys, you can like our Facebook page, The Peel 2005. You can follow us on The Peel 05. Uh, visit our website. Wait, yes, on Twitter. Yes, on Twitter. Hopefully, when I put the at in there, you know that. Yeah. <laughs> um, you can visit our website where you can find this video and future live videos and plus the media kit that we're trying to get some sponsors. Uh, the yeah. Peel. Yeah, if you're, if you're interested in yes, sponsoring please. The Peel, yes. feel free to hook us up with a little contact it's yes. on the site yeah. yes please yes we we, we, we we would like some uh and you can also check us out on soundcloud on itunes google play music and youtube yeah and appeallive.com uh this is going to be the peel signing out forever orange forever orange forever orange